In this video, traders, we are going to look at trends caused by the coronavirus that might be here to stay after this whole thing has passed. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. All right, so I've done a video on this before. This is quite early on in the whole pandemic and we kind of didn't know what was going on and stuff, but a little bit further on in things now, still under lockdown as I'm filming this, um, different countries are starting to come out of lockdown, starting to turn the economies back on. I think there's a feeling that there's a lot of damage being done to the economy. Um, and yes, it's not just a, a kind of deaths versus cash thing. There's also a lot of things to consider in terms of the devastation that could cause people's health if the economy is, is, is hammered too much. So anyway, that's by the by, that's a different topic. But there are scientists, I think there are things which are starting to become a little bit more clearer now. And again, we'll probably follow up on this in a few weeks. So let's see if we can kind of keep this thread going for opportunities um, for investment purposes, for trading purposes, or just for seeing the next themes and trends and how kind of human nature behaves. You can stay ahead of the curve um, with decision making. So, you know, we've got this unique situation now where uh, I know in the UK, we've got this lockdown on the place. We can only go out for one piece of exercise, essential shopping. Um, if you can work from home, companies are saying to employees, uh, employers, get your employees to work from home unless it's absolutely necessary. And so we've got this situation where people's behavior has changed and has been forced on them, whether they like it or not. So let's have a look and see whether that forced change might well cause behavior change to continue after the freedoms have been granted back again and people can go out and do the things they used to do. Okay, so big one is the work from home. Okay, this is an interesting one to me because now we've talked about the stocks and stuff before, things like Zoom and Slack have been, well, Zoom specifically been doing so, so well uh, and all these video conferencing software and sharing facilities. And I've done a video where I specifically talked about a lot of stocks that have benefited from work from home and some of those have done superbly well uh, since that video. Some of them have stagnated a little bit, but it's by the by. The point is, is that I think that companies are now going to realize that actually, hey, we can probably have a certain number of people working from home that is going to save us a fortune in office costs. In fact, I know this is the case because I have seen threads from companies, from CEOs, from people working, not necessarily huge companies, but you would assume that that will go through to huge companies that they're reconsidering the huge office bill they have and saying, hang on, you know what, we've been just as efficient or we've been 90% produ as productive, uh, but without our huge office cost, um, so we could carry on and be so much more profitable. And maybe we could use a percentage of that to have, you know, a, a, an annual get together, an annual meeting, a week and pay for everybody. And, and you know, the, all these things you could do for people and give them employees more perks and still have money left over. They're starting to consider and think, you know what, do we really need to have everybody in an office? You know, because offices aren't cheap, guys. You know, if you've, you've run a business yourself, you know the office is an expensive cost, especially if you want to have a decent office to keep employees there. You know, no one wants to be in a, a boring old office because you just won't retain the best talent. So you've got to spend um, to have a decent size office. And, and, and companies, I think, are going to go, you know what? Even if they don't go pure work from home in a pure distributed workforce, I think they're going to say, hey, you know what? We can actually get away with really reducing our office costs here. You know, maybe we, or maybe this is somewhere that, that companies like WeWork are gonna benefit from. I never thought I'd say that with this environment, I thought this would be the worst thing for them, but potentially the flexibility of being able to have a small little satellite offices as and when they need it might be something that they take may take up on, I don't know. Maybe they just think, hey, you know what, working from home is great, let's see if we can have as many people as possible working from home, but do like I said earlier, where we have like a, a regular meeting where people get together and, and pay people to you know, give them the first class travel there, the accommodation, all this kind of stuff, and you still have plenty of money left over from your uh, really expensive office bill. So that that's gonna be interesting. Of course, the software that people are using as well, they come more familiar with it, becomes more embedded in their SOPs with the business. Um, and so I think this is a big, big, big shift, guys. Uh, there's questions to be asked about it, whether working from home is suitable for everybody all the time, and it's definitely not. You know, if you're a trader and you're sitting there, especially if you've got a home office, is a challenge that comes with that in terms of separating from work and stuff. So it's not just an easy uh, golden bullet for everything, but it might be something that I think is a trend that's going to continue. Um, online shopping, you know, this is pretty obvious, guys. People have been forced 
forced online shopping. You know, in the UK, when you go into some of the major major supermarkets, uh, you can't get an online slot. They're just full. They're absolutely full. In fact, some supermarkets in the UK have just been doing, hey, you can buy a pre-packaged parcel. It's a meat parcel or it's a vegetarian parcel. It's called an essentials par parcels. It's 35 quid or something, and people can just order that because they've just got, they can't have people picking and packing people's exact orders as they normally would. Um, and so this is, you know, people are now being forced into doing this. They might say, you know what? I don't want to be going around a shop with a trolley anymore. I'm quite happy doing this. This is quite good. The guy brings the food to my door. I put it in my fridge. I go back to what I was doing and that might be the kind of shift and the push that a lot of people have needed so I don't actually know uh, from, a, from a supermarket perspective how that affects them. Now I know that obviously if you're going around the supermarket they're trying to flash offers up to you and you know yourself you go to the supermarket you probably buy something, a couple of things you never normally expect just because you see it and you go oh you know that looks quite good I'll buy it I'll try it it's on a special offer or whatever it may be you know that's the way we're humans right that's what we do. Maybe that's not the same when people are shopping as much online I know they're still advertising and stuff and presenting you with offers and trying to get you to buy more stuff but maybe it's not the same but however what what could be a big theme guys is that we start to see supermarkets and this is something that I don't think we have yet in the UK I can't think of one maybe there is others in the, in the other other places we do have one slightly I guess with a card a cardo but a supermarket that literally is just a distribution center no no customers can go into it but you can only order online and yes there's a cardo actually thinking about it but you get the point there might be more of those where they literally do not have any stores we've been going and it's just literally warehouses across the country picking and packing warehouses that are sending things out so uh, that'd be interesting to see how that kind of pans out number one is travel you know will people want to travel unnecessarily you know companies especially big corporates are tied into this whole thing of getting everyone together for meetings all these costs you know the, the constant constant costs in place of in train fares overnight hotels i think that's going to die out i think they're going to realize actually with technology you don't need to be traveling so much companies don't need to be spending so much getting people in the same place anymore yes there's going to be times when it's essential but i just think it's going to reduce slightly four is people's health so people are going to be a lot more mindful for their health I think and I hope actually I think that people are going to say hey you know what we realize that actually being um, overweight having an existing health condition all this stuff I mean some is not preventable of course it's not but some of it is and I think people are going to be much more mindful of the fact that you know paying attention to their health um, is actually really, really essential, not only for productivity, not only for well-being, but only for longer life as well. You know, we just don't know. I think people in the back of their mind will be thinking, you just don't know when the next pandemic can come. You just don't know how aggressive something else might come. Um, and if you're in a bad state of health, you might be unlucky enough to come out of it not as well as you wanted. Fifth one is entertainment. Entertainment from, hey, people are used to going out. I'm, not, I'm sure that won't stop. I'm sure people are still going out. People are still social animals. I understand that. But... There might be a thing of, okay, we have streaming services now. Maybe people are, people have online parties and stuff. And yes, I know there's nowhere near the same. I'm not saying it is, but it might be that people start to do things a little bit differently. Maybe they start to have more personal gatherings at home. Maybe going out um, as a group in a bar or a restaurant becomes less. Maybe it becomes more of, okay, let's have more house type parties or house dinner parties where, you know, they get in uh, deliveries from restaurants and they kind of make it a bit more private and less likely to have other people involved in it and stuff. I don't know. This is just kind of me thinking about how people are doing things now and whether that will continue on. But there's something to think about, guys. You let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. Do you agree, disagree? What's the biggest thing you think is a trend that is here to stay? And then the next thing we can think about after we've digested all that is okay, which stocks might benefit? I know some have already, but you know, what new companies could benefit? How do you think companies will pivot? And what do you think it means for some companies that aren't going to be on top of this trend and on top of this switch? Because if they're not, they're the ones that are going to struggle uh, the most. But these are the kind of things, guys, that really cause big shifts in consumer trends. And so as traders and investors, as kind of people who want to be on the top of these things and keeping our fingers on the pulse, you know, it makes sense to think about these things in our mind and mull them over. And even if we're not going to take a position on them, uh, I still think it's, it's interesting to do. All right, guys, take care. Whatever you're doing, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.